Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today at Holy Trinity via live stream or those who are here with us in person. Just a few announcements uh, today. We had a great week at VBS, and thank you to all our leaders and especially our participants. And a big thank you to Colleen Nielsen, who was our director for the week. It's not an easy job to keep us all going into the right direction. So thank you, and thank you to all of those who generously supported Bible School this week. Um, just an announcement about our administrative assistant search. We have found um, Ruth's replacement, and I know that's big shoes to fill. Elizabeth Stewart was hired this week, and she will begin the middle of August. So we have a, at least we have someone familiar with the workings of the office, so hopefully we'll have a smooth transition. Ruth is still going to be with us some days throughout the end of August to help with the training. So keep us in your prayers, though. And just a reminder that we're starting to collect for school kits. The list is in your bulletin announcements. So please think about contributing to that effort. We will be assembling those on September 11th. That's the day in the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America all across the country. Churches will be doing service projects that day. At this time, I invite you to please rise for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin, and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart, and give us a steadfast spirit. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, in whom we are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. You sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. So read responsibly Psalm 33. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees all humankind. God sits firmly enthroned and watches all who dwell on the earth. God fashions all their hearts and observes. A king is not saved by the size of the army, nor are warriors rescued by the great strength. The horse gives vain hope for victory, despite his great strength it cannot save. Truly your eye is upon those who fear you, O Lord, upon those who wait for your steadfast love. To deliver their lives from death and to keep them alive. Our innermost 
being wait for you, O Lord, our helper and our shield. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, even as we place our hope in you. The second reading is from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that the foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from the distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak In this way, make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, There your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Let the meditation of our hearts and minds, the words that are spoken and our hearing of them, be acceptable unto you, O God, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen.
I don't know about you, but I think it's hard to live in our world today and not experience fear at times. One of the themes of today's text is fear. Jesus knew that those first century folk had a lot to worry about. Fear was present for everyone, from those who were wealthy to those who were extremely poor. The wealthy worried about losing the comforts they lived with, and the poor certainly were worrying about how to feed their families and keep them safe from the corruption of the societal systems in which they were living. It's interesting, though, if we really consider it, that in many ways our fears are not much different today. Jesus knows that worry and fear is a reality of earthly life. And in today's gospel, Jesus gives some advice, I think, about how to alleviate our fear. And in today's gospel, we hear Jesus say, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus talks a lot about the kingdom of God, and that is about how the atmosphere is of, of, of our living. It's a nice little saying for to not be afraid, little flock, but it really is a tall order when you get think about it in light of the many things that can instill fear in us, fear of losing our safety net, whatever that may be for you, or our income, or our savings, or our prized possessions. And we've just lived almost through a pandemic that caused a great deal of fear, took over our lives. And then there's the fear of other kinds of illness, of ourselves or of our loved ones, and the fear of the dangers that can hurt the people we love, and then fear of death itself, which is a reality. This is just a way of living in our world. There's just so much fear around us and the many avenues for with Evil can play upon our fears. And Jesus, though, is also talking about our treasure. As I read today's gospel this week, I thought of what I treasured in life. And I've talked about this before, too. But one of the first things I can treasure the most in my life was my first car. I saved a long time for it. I had a job. I saved. And my brother finally helped me to buy a car. It was a baby blue cougar. And it was really cool. Its headlights closed and opened. And I took that with me when John and I got married. And we drove it to death. We really drove it till it could go no more. But of course, when I thought of things I treasure, my thoughts really went to the people in my lives and experiences in my life that I treasure. It's interesting how the things we treasure, though, change as we grow older. People, certainly in our lives, my family and my friends, past and present, are greater treasures than any accumulation of wealth or any car. So Jesus says to us, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I think those are important words for us to pay attention to. God does not just want to give us some things. God does not just want to have us to have hope, and he does want us to have hope, but God is not just sitting around waiting for us to earn God's favor or watching to make sure we're towing the line and reward us. Rather, God wants to give us all good things. In fact, Jesus says it is our God's good pleasure. That is, God really wants to give us good things. So we hear this promise anchored in Jesus' words as he continues by saying to us, sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. God knows our hearts. And these are our words coming, though, from a loving parent, a coach, who is cheering us on, wanting the best for us, telling us that our intention and our attitude and relationships are what make a difference in life. These are the good things. Saying those things anchored in the promise that God wants to give us these good things. God does not want our lives to be filled with worries. God does want us to keep our priorities straight, though. 
And these verses in Luke that we have been hearing for the past few weeks are about God giving us some guidelines, some help to help us as we live so that we may find true happiness, not a fleeting happiness that a car can give. You know, the kind of happiness that lives deep in our souls and gives us a peace that nothing else can give us and nothing can take from us. Jesus is telling us that true happiness is not found when we are consumed by greed or the love of things over the love of people. God wants us to have and enjoy abundant life that comes from authentic community where we care for each other as much as we care for ourselves, where we look out for one another as much as we look out for ourselves. God wants that kind of life and community for us. And God also desires for us to care just as deeply about tending to our relationships, our relationships with one another, and most importantly, our relationship with God. Even with the knowledge, though, that God intends good for us, hearing the challenge for us to consider what we fear or treasure and really apply that to our lives is difficult. Maybe that is because that a great deal of our lives is filled with demands, great and small. The demand that can lead us to accumulate more and more in exchange for a false sense of security and I think you all know what I mean by that sense of security, that sense of well-being. And then the demand from the world around us to prove our worth on a daily basis, on the many ways we feel vulnerable in our lives that can cause us to worry or have a sense of fear as we look to the wrong place or the wrong things for that security. Sometimes it is hard to trust God's promises and give our worries back to God so that we can live into this full and abundant life that Jesus describes, living more fully and generously. And it's all based on sharing all that we have, our many gifts, our talents, our time, our possessions, and our wealth. During VBS this week, the dominant theme of the lessons was that God loves each of us cares deeply for us and wants to give us all that we need so that we can thrive. On Tuesday, we were at Shank Park, and I was standing with Nathan, and we were watching the youngsters on the um, playground area climbing and swinging and just having so much fun. And we were talking about what I might say to them when they came to me, and it came to my mind that I think God wants us to feel like it is when we're on a playground playing on the sliding board and sliding down that slide and swinging as high as we can. I don't know if you can remember doing that as a child, but I have vivid memories of myself swinging on my playground at my elementary school. And if I got high enough, I could see my house over the school. I still get a little thrill when I think of the joy that gave me. I hope you can remember a time in your life when you felt that thrilled about life and all that was happening, that deep joy. That's what God desires for all of God's good creation, including us. I don't know how many of you realize it, but August 7th is an anniversary for Holy Trinity. On August 7th, 1910, 112 years ago, a group of Lutherans in Hershey gathered as the Evangelical Lutheran Church of the Holy Trinity in Hershey for the very first worship, official worship service. They had gathered for a while since February of 1909 as a Sunday school class, but August 7th, 1910 was their first worship service. And I'm sure there were many thoughts of fear as they gathered that day, but also thrilling excitement. They had achieved a goal. Their thoughts must have been filled with many questions about the future, a future that seemed uncertain, as it does for all of us every day. But the vision and the faithfulness and firm resolve of those first worshipers gave them the courage to start a church with great hopes for the future. And so today we have this community of faith entrusted to us to continue to share God's saving word 
with a world filled with fear and sorrow. One of the amazing things about these Bible verses is that it not only tells us the stories of the people of faith who have gone before us, but it actually invites us in to the story. It's a fantastic story when you think about it. We are part of a story called by as God's beloved people in this time and in this place, called to remember that God is with us as we struggle to believe in our world filled with doubts, as we try to love each other in a world filled with so much hate, and as we attempt to promote peace in a world of violence, as we try to offer hope in a world of despair, as we try to help heal the sick and comfort the dying and console those who mourn, and then, above all, share the love and grace-filled message of God with those around him, that God does indeed want a good kingdom for them. God who created the world out of nothing and raised his son, his son Jesus Christ from the dead, will not give up on you or me or us together. God will continue to speak to us, hoping we will listen, hoping we will discern what it means for us to help spread God's message of love and forgiveness to our world today, to a world filled with, heal, with hurting, hoping we will help to heal it. So hear Jesus say to you today, loud and clear, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen.
<clears throat> Trusting in God's extraordinary love, we, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Almighty God, let your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty with your undying love. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation, dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Send peace where to places torn by conflict, war, poverty, prejudice, or injustice. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. We pray especially for the people impacted by the war in Ukraine. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon your children, O God. Look upon all who wait for your steadfast love. Console those who grieve and embrace those who are suffering and those who care for them. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Today we pray especially for Navaya Almadarvar, Kay Baker, George Bell, Karen Berkheimer, Bob Bentleyon, Jim Bomberger, Dennis Bowerman, Dennis Buchanan, Fran Buchanan, Donna Dixon, David Earhart, Wally Folkrod, Carolyn Hess, Shirley Hess, Glenn Hoffa, Diane Hollyobeck, Rosavina Homasek, Jane Hoover, Mary Heepner, Charlene Hurst, Robin Jordan, Diane Lingle, Bill Mariano, Bill and Laura McEwen, Steve Miller, Donna Pastuck, Sherry Reynolds, Ed Schaefer, Marilyn Schaefer, Margaret Sherrick, Laura Spannenberg, Barb Walker, Cindy Walton, Bob Warden, Alex Wego, Mike Welty, and those we either name in our hearts or aloud. Merciful God, receive, receive our, prayer. our prayer. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. Strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation as we strive to care for those in need. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be with you always. And and also also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. Let us pray. Holy God, you abide with your creation. In Jesus Christ, you gather us at your table. As you stayed with your disciples for an evening meal, so now stay with us. As we receive these gifts of bread and wine, open our hearts to share what we have received, the abiding love of Jesus, our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. He was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.